Welcome to the Drupal Content Optimizer demo. My name is Tom McCracken and I'll be taking you on a quick tour of how to increase your site's search engine rankings using the Content Optimizer module. Before we get started, let's review the magic formula for ranking well in the search engines. Good content plus good architecture plus good backlinks equals higher rankings. Good content, that's what we're going to be talking about in this screencast. Good architecture, Luckily, this is something that you get for free, essentially, within Drupal, particularly if you're using a good, clean theme that's been architected well, and you're using some of the modules that are important, such as the page title, path, path auto, uh, and so forth. Good backlinks. Well, what we're talking about here is we're talking about when other websites link to your pages, pages on your website. How do you go about getting backlinks? Well, that's something that a lot of SEO experts spend a lot of time figuring out. And in screencast parlance, we'd say that that is beyond the scope of this screencast. But good content, that's something we definitely can help with. To get started with the demo, what we have here is we have a typical node edit form where we're adding a node. We're adding just a, a typical page node, content type. And we're going to optimize this page around the word test. So I'm going to type in test run over to Wikipedia and I'm going to paste in a paragraph of content. Now what we see down here is that I've already enabled the optimizer module is we see that we have a field set that will help us do some optimization and actually the way the content optimizer module works is it is an analyzer for an API called the content analysis API. Content analysis API allows us to interface with various types of content on the Drupal website and it enables different types of analyzers and the content optimizer is one such analyzer. There are others that will do readability, W3C analysis, keyword analysis and so forth but primarily we're focusing on doing some, uh, some SEO rules. And the content analysis API gives us two types of reports. There's the main reports that pop up and will give us a modal dialog box so that we can analyze our content uh, we'll look at several different sections kind of in one area. There's also the inline reports. The inline reports look section by section at your website and give different uh, recommendations from different analyzers on what you should do to optimize those sections. I generally find that the inline reports are, I find are the most useful for doing SEO type work. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this button. What happened is it sent an AJAX call back to the server and the server looked at the different content areas and came back with recommendations and statistics. So if we look up here, it came back with this report saying that we have one word, four characters, and that really titles should be up to 70 characters. And the closer we can get to that, the better. And so we should consider adding some content. So let's go ahead and do that now. Oh, I will go ahead and use the quick hint hit refresh on the green button, went back to the server and came back with a new analysis. Now it says we're getting closer, but we're still not quite there. So let's add in a few more words. Again, I will go back and hit the refresh button. And now that we see we no longer have any warnings, and so far everything's looking good in our page title. If we scroll down to our body analysis, then we notice that we're still a little bit short on the number of words that we have. So I'm going to run back over to Wikipedia copy out a little bit more information. If only creating copy on your website was that easy. Now I'm going to hit the refresh button and now that we see that all of our warnings have gone away. One thing that we haven't done though yet is create a targeted keyword phrase for our node content. And when you're creating nodes and you, if, that you want to place well in the search engines, you should focus them around a particular keyword phrase. For our example, we're going to use the word test. Hit the inline reports again. And we'll notice that we now have some new statistics that came back. Uh, we now basically have how many times does a keyword occur in our section area. Uh, the density, so it says here 14.3%, which is basically just 1 divided by 7. And then there's an algorithm called keyword prominence. And this is an algorithm that basically determines how close to the beginning of the copy or that section, the content of that section is our keyword. Um, in the page title it's fairly straightforward, it gets more complex when you look at longer sections such as the body. And so we see now is we now have a green uh, kind of a go sign that we've actually optimized our, our page title properly. If we scroll down to our body that we'll notice that we still have a warning up. Uh, we may have a warning because our keyword now occurs 14 times which is a little bit high. Now the main reason this is happening is because we've focused on a one word phrase which is something you wouldn't want to do in real, for real SEO. For real SEO, you're going to want to be looking at phrases that are two, three, four, maybe even up to five words long, 
Um, and so you can get a lot more specific, unless of course you've got something that's a very obscure type word that you might want to focus on one word, but generally you're optimizing around longer phrases and it'll be easier to get that count down. Let's take a quick look at what the main report looks like. So if we click on the main report, we'll see that's going to come back now and tell us what our page title, our body, and it also looks at our meta keywords and our meta description. Now I've installed the node words module which allows us to add keywords and meta description which our API, our modules are working with um, and understand I haven't put any content in but if I go ahead and open up the meta tags we'll see that I can go ahead and put some content in. I'm going to just grab the first sentence out of, uh, grab first sentence out of here, paste it in, hit the refresh, see it's a little too long so let's go ahead and cut it back and now now we've got the green light there also um, the other thing that the modules will work with is the page title because really when you're opt one of the most important areas for search engine optimization is your meta title or the title that appears at the top of your page within your doc HTML documents head section and the standard title within a node will both go in the both go in the title tag and it will go as a header but if you add the um, page title module it'll separate those two and you can control them separately so I'm gonna go ahead and add that what we'll need to do is save this node in order to be able to see this I'm gonna run back and edit and so now that we'll see that we have a title this is what's gonna appear in the H the H1 tag and now we have a page title. This appears within the title tags in the header block. We probably don't want something this long, so I'm going to go ahead and shorten this. And But now I have my keywords up in the, the important search engine area, the title tag. Hit my inline reports, and we see we're still optimized. So now the, the modules are reading from the page title and not from the title field. Another feature that's important is... Uh, there, it's important to optimize your nodes while editing content, but we also want to look at the page in its entirety. And so, the so our modules have this block here uh, that allows us to basically analyze the front side of a node. We click this, and basically now what it's doing is it's pulling all the HTML on the page. This is going to include all of your blocks. This is going to include any menu items, um, any theming elements that you have. So we look at it in its entirety, not just the clean node content. Um, and of course we can see that there, the statistics have now changed. The other thing that's great about this block here is, uh, and I can also change the, 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 the keyword if I wanted to, the other thing that's great about this block is that we can go and actually optimize any page on our Drupal website. So for example, here I've got a list of nodes, I can actually sit there and analyze this. So we can analyze panels and we can analyze views and other types of programmatic pages that we might have within our website, not just nodes. The third interface that the system gives us is that we can actually go in and do freeform content. So in other words, let's say we have some content that uh, we might just want to do some quick tests. We can just type it in here, get analysis. We can also pull a node ID if we want to. The one last thing though that's kind of fun is that we actually can pull any page on the web. So say for example you've got um, someone and you're curious why they show, show up so well in the search engines, you can actually run an analysis on that page. Or if you've got another website built in some other system, you can do analysis on that. So let's take a quick look at uh, Drupal.org. And we're going to test it for the word Drupal. It went out and it fetched it and it came back with, uh, it's basically running analysis on the home page of Drupal.org. And what we see here is that um, they actually have a fairly short title. Uh, Drupal.org could use, use a longer title. And we see there's a lot of words in the body. It's a little bit high. And of course the word Drupal occurs 67 times. Despite the fact that it's breaking the rules, uh, or breaking some basic guidelines. Actually, the Drupal website appears first for in Google for the term Drupal, but that's because there's a bajillion links that are going to it with the word Drupal. So for those of us who don't have a bajillion links, it's good to follow these rules. And that's kind of one last note, that these rules are some good rules to follow. They're great for people who are not necessarily SEO. So if you've got, uh, you've got content editors or content writers that aren't necessarily steeped in SEO, these are just some good guidelines that they can follow to help optimize their content better, although they're not necessarily hard and fast rules. And experienced SEO people, they get to know these over time and they just kind of do them by nature. Thank you for joining us for the screencast and make sure to check out other content analyzer modules.